I would like to start our discussion off today with a question. When you're on social media, whether you're scrolling on Facebook or checking out some photos on Instagram, what is the general feeling that you have? Is it generally good or is it generally bad? So when you're seeing other people, how do you feel about yourself? And that's what we're gonna to explore today. I think the general consensus is that we are feeling bad, we are feeling negative. The way that we're using social media right now is not working, but I do believe that we can reclaim it. I believe we can reclaim social media by grabbing onto transparency and literally disrupting the dynamic in the way that we've been using it and we can change it and recreate it for good. If you've seen the recent documentary, The Social Dilemma, they talk about some startling statistics in it, and this has all been backed by, by research. Lots and lots of studies around this. But in the documentary, they talk about, and this is just one age category, but some of the negative consequences that social media has on people. And in the preteen category, so just looking at one age demographic, they share that suicide rates have increased 150% in the last decade. Self-harm has tripled and incidents of anxiety and depression and the issues surrounding this have become an epidemic. It's literally unprecedented. Some of the other negative side effects that we are seeing with social media are low self-esteem. I think we can all agree to that. Isolation. And now more than ever, I believe people need connection and they're feeling more isolated by using social media. We're feeling more envious of others, so when we're using social, we're comparing ourselves to other people. We're experiencing addiction, more stress around it, fear of missing out, and this is where we find ourselves having that, doing things that we maybe wouldn't do otherwise because we see others doing it. Loss of reality, Instagram, right? A lot of that is very distorted of what's real. And overall negative feelings is what we're experiencing when we're using social media. I believe this is because of a pattern that we have starting with our thoughts. The thoughts that we have over and over again about ourselves, that we're, in, we're not good enough, we don't have value to offer. And unknowingly to us, when these thoughts are left unchecked, they start to repeat over and over again and cause behaviors. They cause habits. We start taking actions that we maybe wouldn't otherwise take. And over time, these repetitive actions become our beliefs about ourselves. We, we start telling ourselves these stories about ourselves that are not serving us, telling our stories about ourselves that we're not good enough. And when this happens, we start to shape this image of ourselves that is very, very negative and destructive. And I wanna share with you why I got into social media. So I'd like to introduce you to the motivators. This is my family, this is my husband, Scott, and my daughters, Addison and Elise. And when I first got into social media, it was for them. At the time, I had just overcome a strong uh, issue with alcohol abuse in one. Addison and Elise were one and two at the time. And we were like a lot, a lot of new families. We were you know, knocking, chipping away at some debt. And a friend reached out to me about her network marketing company and the opportunity there. And I thought, you know what? This could really help us. And at the exact same time, Addison's the preschool owner of her school. She reached out and said, Addison's loving the dance classes that are happening here. I would like to gift her a six month scholarship. And I thought, that's incredible. It's wonderful. And then the very next thought I had was, how are we going to pay for it at the end of this six months? She's going to want to keep going. And I thought, this is the perfect challenge. I could do this network marketing thing and get that going. And this could totally work. But I vowed I was going to be different. I was gonna be different the way I saw that people were using social media. And it felt icky to me, a bit spammy. And I said, you know what, if I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna be genuine and I'm gonna be authentic. And I did not have a following at all. I didn't even have an Instagram account, but I decided I was just gonna go for it. So I got a selfie stick and with my cell phone, I just sat in my car and I started going live every week and I would share my struggles and I would share my successes. I would share what was going on. I was being really, really just authentic. I would cry on camera. I would laugh on camera. But most importantly, I got to know the people on the other side of that camera. I found out what their hopes were, what their dreams were, what their issues were. And I discovered true community. I realized that's what people wanted. They wanted real connection. 
That is literally the secret sauce is people are just craving authenticity. Authenticity. So I want you to think about you. I want to think about yourself. When it comes to any success that you want in your life, it stems from value and worth, the value we have in ourselves, the worth that we have. And I want to challenge you to stop playing small. Stop seeing yourself as insignificant and know that by yourself, you have the impact to impact at least one other person. And that's how we can create a true ripple effect in this world. Now, I want to show you some examples here of real people using social media for good. First one I'm going to share with you is Catherine. We actually have a lot in common. She's also celebrating sobriety and she's a mom as well. And she told me before she posted this, she was really nervous to share this post because she felt very exposed. She was airing her dirty laundry, telling her story about overcoming her alcohol issues. And she said when she posted it, her inbox, a messenger blew up of women saying, thank you for posting that. Thank you for being real. Thank you for sharing because that is inspiring me to make a change. And the key thing she heard was thank you for being real. This right here is Christine and she is lifting up her grandmother who she shares had gone through four years of war, struggled through the depression and said she was smart and resourceful and loved. And the reason why I think this is so important to point out is because think of all the blessings that we have right around us, our family, our friends, are we taking time to utilize social media to, to celebrate the people right around us and all the things that we have to be grateful for? On the left, this is Raynell, and she has a goofy photo of her and her son. And she says, life's too short to have everything be perfect. Let your hair be messy and yourself be goofy. She is giving other moms permission to have fun and be silly and not be perfect. And I think that this is really refreshing. In the middle, Leanne said that someone had sent her an unkind message in Messenger. And she said, when it happened, she thought, how could I turn this into a positive? So she decided to do a post around it. And she said, no matter what little box someone has put you in or you have put yourself in, know this, you are beautiful, creative, unique, and bold. You are funny, kind, you are empowered, you are more than enough. Don't let anyone, including yourself, make limiting remarks about you or make you feel small. Now I have to ask you, if you were scrolling on social media and you saw a post like this and someone was speaking truth into you like that, how would that make you feel? If you were on your phone and you saw this, how would it make you feel? That's what we need to think about. And this one from Alicia, Alicia chose to grab a photo from someone else's Facebook profile. So she grabbed Kathy's picture, put it on her own wall on Facebook and shouted out Kathy, said all the wonderful things she loved about Kathy. And she invited other people to do the same. The last one I, I want to share with you is Sherry and Sherry is also a mom as well. We have, we have that in common and she shared this photo and I love this so much because you know, she talks about our kids are watching us and that they learn by seeing what we're doing. And she says, because I know she watches you, watches me, I choose not to settle. I want to show her what it will, what it looks like to be successful and how it feels to help others. So go ahead. I dare you to be the first. Be brave, fight fear, believe in yourself and overcome because if you do, so will they. As a mom, if I, I wasn't having a great day and wasn't feeling like I was crushing it and I saw this post, it would give me that little boost. It would give me that little bit of motivation to say, okay, you can do this. And the way that we're using social media right now, this is not what we're seeing. It's destructive. We're experiencing, you know, big time comparison, imposter syndrome. We're questioning who we are and getting lost in, in the sea of social media. So this is the three steps I want you to implement. Instead of comparing yourself to others, I want you to use this platform to serve, to mentor and connect with others. I want you to think about how can you make a difference? Instead of imposter syndrome, let's push that to the side and let's create a framework for things that we're truly passionate about. Maybe for you, it is helping that new mom into motherhood, or maybe you want to help somebody get that first job. You figure out what that is and you lean into that. And instead of questioning who we are, 
let's lean into this global impact here of social media. Never before in the history have we been able to reach people to this extent and this speed than ever before, and let's use that for good. Instead of looking outside of ourselves, let's look inside. Let's claim our truth, let's claim our good. Yes, we need to guard our platforms. We need to be mindful of what we're consuming, that content we're consuming, and we need to be mindful of the content we're putting out there. We, we want to use social media for, for, to fulfill ourselves, but we also want to think about how, what we're putting out there on social media. Now, I love this quote from Brene Brown, and she says, vulnerability is not winning or losing. It's having the courage to show up and be seen when we have no control over the outcome. Vulnerability is not weakness. It's our greatest measure of courage. I believe by being vulnerable that we can be the light to others. People need that more now than ever. They are craving community and connection. If we can be the light to others and show them what's possible, we can ignite that fire in them for them to make the changes in their own lives. People come to social media for inspiration. They're coming and looking for something good. They're looking for that beacon of hope. And we can be that to other people. And it truly is that ripple effect that we can make to other people. And this is the best part. When others see us doing that on social media, that's truly what social proof is. It's giving others permission to make the changes in their own lives. Not only are we giving them the motivation, but we can also give them the vision. So I wanna leave you with a question. Can you commit to leaving people better off than when you found them on social media? To positively impact at least one other person a day? I truly believe that we can change the game through the most powerful form of communication on the planet, and that is social media. Thank you.